All right, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, holy crap, social media is a job, and um, a lot of this stuff is some of the stuff I presented to uh, a bunch of UNC uh, journalism graduates, um, senior graduates uh, this last year. So um, real quick about me. I am a social media manager at BMC Software currently. I was in 05 uh, undergrad at UT, got my BBA there. Worked in social about five years now, I'm up to about 59,000 Twitter followers, and was ranked in 2011 as having the number one social network um, on, on social. So how did I get here? Well, I would say it kind of started in 1995. You know, this is a cool album. This is a brand new car, and this is the internet, right? Um, that was the first year that I got AOL. Don't forget your trusty little dial-up modem, right? Um, first year I got AOL, I was really excited. I don't know if anyone remembers, but they used to they used to have uh, something like ten hours a month, and you paid per hour beyond that. Um, and this was probably some of you guys. But about 10 years later, um, I designed my first website. And it's still up today. Don't, don't go looking for it. But it's pretty horrible. <laughs> I actually put on here, definitely best viewed with Microsoft Internet Explorer. I don't know what I was thinking. But um, you know, since then, I've been able to kind of take that enthusiasm and passion for technology and bring that to marketing. And I, I kind of think, you know, the two of them kind of intersect at social, right? So, um, well, 2005, um, the University of Texas was the 13th campus that Facebook opened up to. I was, I figure I'm probably about the millionth Facebook user or, uh, or so back then. Um, and since then, you know, I, after that, I took a job kind of doing general kind of marketing communications, did a lot of traveling, trade shows, um, organizing things, uh, newsletters, even showed up on TV a couple times. Um, but the best two things I did when I worked at GDF Suez was I started the PPC campaigns there, and I also started social. So once I had that under my belt, I was able to kind of concentrate on the social media side and take that going into other jobs. So what am I going to tell you today? Number one, what's social media about? Number two, yes, there are jobs in social. And you know what a lot of you guys can probably do right now to help build your own personal brands. So back in, oh, by the way, um, down here on the left, this is my Twitter handle, Eric T. Tung. You can access this slide. Oop, wait. I guess I didn't change all these. Um, you can access this slide deck at erict.co slash snhu social. And uh, if you want to tweet something, you can use that hashtag as well. So feel free to use any of those. Uh, I guess I didn't change all of them. Some of these slides show the UNC URL. But anyway, I'll, I'll make sure to change those later. But uh, back in 2009, so this is when Twitter was only three years old. They only had, you know, one-tenth as many users as they have now. They already generated $6.5 million in sales directly attributable to Dell. In uh, the next year or so, Comcast was kind of the first company that got into social media customer service. They helped over 150,000 customers through Comcast Cares. And they were, believe it or not, they were actually really good when it came to trying to um, find people that weren't happy with, uh, with Comcast. They would actually go out proactively and search for them. Um, Starbucks started a website called My Starbucks Idea. That resulted in 50,000 new product ideas for them. So, you know, instead of paying, what, tens of thousands of dollars, maybe more, to have your traditional sit-down, um, what are they called? When you get a bunch of people in the mirrored room, you know? Focus groups. Focus groups. That's what I'm looking for. There you go. Focus group. <clears throat> 
<laughs> yeah, so you can spend tens of thousands of dollars, you know, getting people together for a focus group, or you can put this out there and say, hey, what do you guys think we should do? And you'll get tons and tons of response. No! Um, Ford, Ford back in... I don't actually remember when it was. Uh, a few years ago, when they were launching the Fiesta, a couple years ago, uh, they sent the Fiesta to 100 bloggers in Europe for a year. It generated 31,000 pieces of content and 60% awareness before the car was even sold. That's pretty amazing for a new product, right? Yeah. And uh, everyone remembers that the Red Cross raised $5 million from 500,000 donors in two days after the Haitian earthquake, speaking to the power of mobile and business. Social networking is huge. If social networks were countries, they would be three of the top five largest countries in the world, all larger than the U.S. when it comes to population. What's this mean for companies? So, you know, from my perspective, I work in a company that sells enterprise software to other companies. So companies like um, PayPal and uh, Carfax. So, you know, you don't have mom and dads on the corner, you know, buying $50,000 pieces of software. So what does this mean for companies, though, right? IBM reported a 400% increase in sales the first quarter tied to a pilot of social selling. It's not just for kids. Social, um, these days, the average Facebook user is 42 years old. Um, Twitter, their fastest growing segment is 55 to 64-year-olds, and 45 to 54-year-olds on Facebook and Google are the fastest growing segments. So if you think about your business decision makers, if you're thinking about your IT managers, those types of folks, those are who we're, we're targeting at BMC Software. Uh, those are the people that are in increasing numbers getting on social. Out of a hundred, uh, excuse me, out of a thousand B2B global buyers, 33% already use social to engage with vendors and 75% are likely to do so in the future. These are people that, you know, are, are the exact people that we might be targeting, for example. 55% have used social in a B2B search for information and 70% of a buyer's journey is complete before it gets to sales, meaning that they're already out there looking at your blog posts, looking at your white papers, uh, your webinars, and they're, they're absorbing this information before they even call you or contact you or fill out a form. They're already you know, progressing down that journey. If you don't have any of that content out there, you're going to be losing out on probably you know, up to 70% of the people that might be going into your sales funnel. Show me the money. 78.6% of salespeople using social media outsold their peers. You know, I think that's pretty awesome. Online conversation with uh, prospects accelerate deals. If you're on social, um, it, it decreases your sales cycle by 41 to 60%, and if you're on Twitter, 21 to 39%. And the reason is, people that connect with you on social are going to be more knowledgeable. They're already going to have their basic questions answered, and you know they're not going to need that kind of back and forth. How do you do this? How do you install the software? What kind of tech support do you have? They already know because they've seen what you're posting on your blog and what you're posting on your social media sites. The media the landscape is changing. If you look at this graph here. Um, you know, all the digital forms are taking off. Internet's huge over here. And, um, digital TV, even analog TV, um, all those, you know, print, those are all heading down, right? So, you know, where's the future? Where's the future of media? Where's the future of uh, advertising going to be? It's going to be online. It's going to be digital. And you can see that a lot. Um, just this last summer when we had Pope Francis brought in, in uh, 2005, this is what the crowd in St. Peter's Square looked like. This is what it looked like in 2013. 2001 for President Bush, this is what his uh, inaugural ball looked like. This is what it looked like for Obama in 2013. So you can see that social and mobile and all of that is really just changing the way that everyone even works. There's some people that say in a few years there won't even be newspapers anymore, not in their current forms. We might still have the you know the traditional big guys, right? New York Times, Wall Street Journal, uh, USA Today, 
But you can already see that Newsweek is going to Daily, uh, a bunch of you know other pretty you know large newspapers have closed up shop or have gone online only. So. Um, and uh, people are shifting from web-based email, too. If you look at this, <clears throat> this is from a few years ago, 2010, 20, 2009. But basically it was showing back then people that were 12 to 17 years old decreased their use of web-based email by 60%. This is because they're using Facebook, they're using SMS, they're using other forms of communication. There are even universities out there now that do not issue you a university email address when you sign up because they know you already have your Gmail account or some other form that you're going to be using to communicate. They don't need to be using, you know, expending the resources to give you an email address. <clears throat> and uh, to, break it, to break it down a little bit, there's kind of three main categories of online marketing channels. You've got the owned area, which is kind of everything that you have a lot of control over. This is your websites, your apps, your customer care services, things like that. On top of that, you, you have your paid area. So these are the things that you can pay for and also get on top of your, your own. So internet advertising, PPC, sponsorships uh, as well. But to get the full picture, you really need to have that earned media as well. This is your uh, social media, word of mouth, user forms, uh, block relationships, that kind of thing. So it's not until you have all three pieces do you have kind of a full picture uh, from the media perspective. So where's the ROI? What does online uh, lead generation look like? You know, at BMC we have BMC communities. That's our our blogs, you know, our, our forums and where that's housed. Um, that kind of shoots over into your um, your social media. So you share these blog posts on your social networks. When you do that, you direct them back to your blog, which means it helps to um, provide the SEO value and also provides the click-throughs. Um, you can also get mentioned in other places, New York Times, TechCrunch, mainstream media. You can share that to your um, social, social networks as well. All of that does awesome for SEO. Um, when you have those keywords showing up, it, it definitely, you know, it, it makes it so that search engines realize um, you've, you've got, you know, new stuff going on. Um, and then when you have the SEO, that'll redirect folks to your main website. So you've got, you know, your blog as well as your main website. For us, it's bmc.com, which can go to your landing page. So when people are clicking through, uh, when they're looking at your, when they're doing a search on social, they can click through to gmail.com, it might say, hey, we have this white paper that explains to you how to, you know, how to have a smoother uh, running help desk, for example. Um, that'll shoot you over to a landing page where you have to fill out the form that turns into a lead, right? Or if you don't have that part of it, you can also do retargeting. You've seen this before if you've ever gone to Amazon or, you know, uh, Overstock, where you put something in your shopping basket and you don't check out, right? What happens? Have you ever seen it where it'll show up in the ads later on? Hey, you look like you need some red shoes or whatever. And you're like, those are the ones that I just picked and didn't buy, right? <laughs> so that's exactly what they're doing. They're retargeting. And that is one of the most effective um, PPC uh, areas is, is targeting people that have already you know, sh expressed interest. And then, um, oh, also people that click onto your uh, blogs, you can also retarget towards those people as well. When they click on that banner ad, send them to a landing page, and they become a lead. So that's how kind of the whole ecosystem of social and blogs and SEO and lead generation works. Um, I actually put this together when I was applying for the job at EMC, and it seemed to work out pretty well, so I thought I'd share with you guys. Any questions? All right, I'll keep going. Um, why should you blog? I love what Jay Bear says. Um, give away information snacks to sell knowledge meals. 
what he means here is that you see people like HubSpot and Salesforce and folks like that blogging about the very stuff that's, that they sell, right? I mean, when HubSpot says, here are 10 different ways that you can do email marketing, that's kind of you know taking away from them selling you email marketing consulting services or something, right? But what happens is, I have a slide on this. Um, when you have the blog posts that go out there, you've got your customers and your prospects that are looking at your, um, you know, what's out there. Uh, for example, if anyone follows uh, the sales line on Twitter, Marcus Sheridan, he back in two thousand eight. Um, worked for a company called River Pools, and it was a pool company over in Maryland, Virginia area, and he figured out that with the downturn in the economy, people were no longer buying pools. He, he couldn't convince people to decide to go buy a pool, right? So he figured out that he had to kind of snipe those customers from his competition. So he started blogging all the time. He wrote as many blog posts as he possibly could, and it really, uh, I mean, right now, he keynotes, speaks at, you know, conferences all the time because he really kind of developed the way uh, that blogs kind of help, um, you know, help people out. You know, at the time, no one was telling you, you none of the pool providers were telling you how much a fiberglass pool would cost. They would kind of come out and check out your, your house and kind of, and half the time, you know, you know as well as I do, right? It's, it's what your house looks like. Do you have a nice house, right? So um, he actually sat down and wrote in a blog post, this is, you know, this is how much you should be spending on a fiberglass pool. Or this is, you know, what happens when you buy a saltwater pool versus a chlorine pool and that kind of thing. So he wrote down every single question that anyone ever asks him and wrote a blog post about it. And he became, I mean, pretty much second to Wikipedia um, whenever people were searching for, for pool information. Whenever you write a blog post, it also tells Google that your website is regularly updated. One of the factors that uh, goes into SEO is when when it was last updated, right? So if you have two webs, you know, web pages you're looking at, the one that was you know last updated in 2009 probably isn't that relevant, but the one that you know came out a month ago or a week ago is probably going to be more relevant. So by having um, blog posts, it regularly tells Google that your web your website is regularly uh, regularly updated. Um, furthermore, it adds keywords to your website. Um, you know, Google doesn't care whether it's on your blog or your website, you know, your formal website or whatever. It's all web pages to them, right? So the more you have um, keywords on your page, uh, the better your, your website will do. I love this quote from um, Scott Cook. He's a board member at eBay and PNG, as well as a co-founder of Intuit. Brand is no longer what we tell the consumer it is. It is what we, t uh, what customers tell each other it is, right? And everyone probably has seen this, you know, on Facebook or on Twitter or something. You're like, uh, I need a new iPhone case. My iPhone case sucks. What, what do you like, right? What's out there? And people will respond. And that's exactly what uh, Mr. Cook's saying here. So people are talking. Here's a few different examples from different utility companies. I don't know where everyone's located. Um, but people are definitely posting about your company, no matter what it is, right? Center Point Energy, what we have here in Houston, Con Edison from uh, New York Encore, that would be over there in Dallas. So, you know, BGE is Baltimore. Um, People are really, really, you know, passionate about obviously what they're, you know, what they think, and especially when it comes to their electricity not coming on. Um, but when it comes to companies, a lot of them are just really plugging their ears and not listening. I do have a quote of including my kid in the presentation once. Um, so what this is really saying is that you're part of the conversation. People are now um, part of the marketing mix. 
Dragonfly says, companies can no longer control the message, but they can control the results if they're aware of which channels of communication their audience is using. And um, I call this the greatest customer service story ever told, and it's uh, starring Morton Steakhouse. There's a guy, uh, his name's Peter Shankman. Um, he, had, he lives up in New Jersey, and he had a particular day where he was flying to two different cities in Florida for customer meetings and then flying back the same day. So it was a long day for him. Um, he says, flying home. I, I don't remember if he, like, forgot to eat that day or something, but, you know, it just, uh, he decides to tweet, hey, Mortons, can you meet me at Newark Airport with a porterhouse when I land in two hours? Kay, thanks. And, you know, nobody would ever actually expect, you know, anyone to do anything about that. But within two hours, people at Morton's corporate saw the tweet, they heard it, they figured out where the nearest restaurant was, which is still 20 miles away from Newark. It was uh, it was in Manhattan somewhere, right? They had to cook up the order, bring it out, and by the time he landed, they, they, they figured out what gate he was coming through and everything. They presented him his steak, and he tweeted, oh my god, I can't believe it. Morton showed up with a porterhouse and sent a picture to, right? He blogged about it. Oh, this is the entire meal. Right? I think that he got some shrimp and uh, some bread and stuff too. And um, But on top of that, he blogged about it. This is back in 2011. I've used this example in like every single presentation I've done. Plus, he's got 405 comments. How many thousands of people have heard this story now because of this, right? So Morton's Knew, definitely knew what they were doing when they were doing it. You know, Peter's probably never going to another steakhouse again, right? But then everyone else, you know, hears us about them, and it's it's just a, a great story. In the same way, nature gave us one tongue and two ears so we could hear twice as much as we speak. Um, so what does that mean for... Oh, oh, check this out. So this is actually when I was flying to the University of... Um, North Carolina back in March, I tweeted out, I'm on a flight 1204 out of IH tomorrow. Looking at terminal maps, I don't see D1 out of terminal A. And I, I got I kind of confused. U.S. Airways and Inter Intercontinental Airport here in Houston both tweeted me to make sure I got, figure, you know, got that figured out, right? Once I got to the hotel in North Carolina, I checked in on Foursquare at the Carolina Inn and they tweeted me back, welcome, hope you enjoy your time with us. Notice I didn't actually mention them in the tweet anywhere. They were actually listening for their company name. So when someone uh, said something about them, they would be, you know, they'd, ha they'd have that. So definitely, definitely, you know, listening is a huge part of it. How quick do companies respond? These are, uh, this is uh, Facebook pages, right? Um, whenever they have a negative response and how long it takes to respond. So Wendy's is right here at the top, about two minutes. Pizza Hut's about an hour 15. Chick-fil-A is an hour 25. So um, it really comes down to, you know, do you have the processes in place to be able to facilitate and empower uh, a quick response from the social team, right? Uh, it takes a really long time. The, what, uh, a and W takes, like, what, two days or something? Is that what that's saying? So two days, 19 hours, and 53 minutes to respond to a negative post. And that's that just doesn't even cut it these days, right? Uh, I've heard some research that says people on Twitter expect a, re, um, a, a resolution to the problem within 30 minutes, right? So um, that makes a huge difference. What about real-time marketing? Oreo uh, during it's the blackout. Uh, you probably heard about this. But during when the power went out at the at the Super Bowl, Oreo put out this tweet, no power out, no problem, and they sent this picture as well. You can still dunk in the dark. And it was like it was it was amazing. They actually had all the all the processes and all the people put together in the right room, in the same room, and was able to push through um, copy and creative all you know, I think it came out like within ten minutes or something. So uh, it, it, it was done really well and really quickly, and they got a lot of uh, coverage for that. What do people want from social? Incentives, discounts, customer service. But look down here. 21% of people still don't mind marketing. But what do most social media 
company or what do most companies on social do? They pour on that marketing, right? It's all marketing, and then maybe there's some cool stuff in the around the fringes. Um, you know, make sure you flip that and give give your customers what they came to look for. What do most um, companies look like when it comes to social? There's a lot. There's um, there's actually a, a an infographic out there that has most of the, this information, but if you look at uh, social media job postings, about 30% are for content writers, marketing managers, strategists, uh, and it kind of goes from there. Um, how many do different companies have? I don't know how large the company was, uh, but they inter uh, they let's see, they looked at I guess what 154 total people or something, and figured out that there's you know different roles. Uh, within the social media department. So there's editors, managers, admins, writers, all that, um, all that th uh, right there. Um, and the average average company had 51 social media accounts according to the, uh, this was a, a spread fast report, I think. So if you consider, you know, what, like Ford, they have something like 50 different Facebook pages alone. They've got um, you know, for motor company, and then they've got uh, trucks, and then they've got Mustang. They have Ford Brazil and India. So you know, if you think about that, there's there's thousands of business pages out there that need uh, writers and strategists and and social media employees. Largest markets. Um, Houston barely made the list. We're at number nineteen over here. Uh, Austin's at 15. Uh, where, where are you guys all located, by the way? We're in New Hampshire. Everyone's in New Hampshire? Atlanta. <laughs> Washington, Atlanta. D.C. Okay. Eric, I'm in upstate New York. <laughs> D.C., New York. Cool. Washington, D.C. Okay, great. So uh, uh, D.C., number six, right? Um, New York City's number one. Uh, I guess nothing really upstate. Um, Atlanta's on here, number 11. So there's a lot of uh, opportunity, um, kind of pretty close to a lot of where you, know, you guys are. Um, so definitely good info. Um, how much do you make? I mean, social media marketing managers, 73 to 116. This is out of um, New York City. But, you know, pretty decent numbers here, I would think. I mean, I, I know coming straight out of school, my first job was like 35. So, you know, if you were starting at a community manager or something like that, you know, these, these are definitely some pretty decent numbers. My day. Engagement, education, entertainment, empowerment, and earring. So it's kind of everything, right? Right now, um, I'm shifting a little bit. I'm, I'm doing more, uh, more of the education side of it. At BMC, I'm in charge of doing um, kind of seminars and... Um, things like that to try and empower our own people to uh, to get on social. Uh, one of the things I say is, in within a few years, social is really going to be a skill that everyone should have. It's not just going to be a department within your company, right? So, you know, you don't have a vice president of email, right? Everyone just writes their own emails. You don't have a you know director of the fax machine. And in the same way, in the future, you know, customer service organizations. Um, especially, right? But then also, you know, maybe your recruiting department, right? Your HR people, your sales folks, marketing, you know, all of these different organizations within your company should have their own people that get into social and, uh, and help tell your story. 10% <clears throat> of organizations report an employee who's done something in social that has damaged its reputation. And you hear about these all the time. Detroit, right? How, what, what have they been doing? They've been uh, Chrysler, ex especially, has been saying, "What in, you know, um, imported from Detroit." They're they're proud of being from Detroit, right? But this one particular day, one of the guys from the agency that works for Chrysler accidentally tweeted from the Chrysler Autos handle. I find it ironic that Detroit is known as the Motor City, yet no one here is know how to you know no one knows how to drive. <laughs> and that would be pretty horrible. The guy got fired and I think his agency <laughs> got let go too. So, 
you know, no matter what what you think you want to put out there, make sure it's going to the right account and just be a professional generally, right? Be nice. FedEx, pretty much the same thing. A guy from uh, Ketchum, who was the agency that was doing social for FedEx, says, true confession, but I'm in one of those towns where I would I scratch my head and say I would die if I had to live here in Memphis, right? <laughs> I mean, sure, it's not a big city, but it's, it's not, you know, that bad. Uh, that got sent up the chain, and finally, one of the VPs wrote back, we do not know the total millions of dollars FedEx pays Ketchum. We are confident, however, it is enough to expect a greater level of respect and awareness from someone in your position. A hazard of social networking is people will read what you write. I, um... Yep. I work, um... Joe? For a company called Bernard Hodes Group, and um, we take care of the social media for um, the Home Depot on the human resources side. So okay. part of what I do um, is go through and reply to people who are excited about recently being hired um, from Home Depot. And you wouldn't mm -hmm. believe the amount of people that would that say, just got uh, hired for Home Depot, I better clean out my system to pass this drug test. Or like the, <laughs> the crazy <laughs> things that people say. And we're, you know, they're watching. You know, you, you got to realize that. Mm -hmm. Wow. I actually used to be a vendor in Home Depot stores, so I definitely know some of these guys. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, working for a couple, uh, I don't know, a lot of you can probably buy, let's see, not Atlanta, some places in New Hampshire, uh, I don't think in D.C., but you can, you can pick your own electric company. You know, Dallas and Houston, you can. One of the competitors for one of the companies I was working for had a new hire write something like, I got a job at TXU. Now I don't have to murder and oh uh, sell drugs anymore, or something like that, right? So I I sent that to I figured out who one of the um, I think I just sent I think I just sent it to their like regular customer service line or something. I said, hey, I work for your competitor, but we saw this mentioning you. You might want to do something about it. And I actually got an email back from one of the VPs of marketing that said, hey, thanks for the note. Uh, you know, the proper steps have been taken. So definitely, definitely, you know, be careful with what you put out there. Uh, be transparent. Amazon Mechanical Turk, I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. It's basically a service that Amazon has that you can pay people to do kind of, kind of menial tasks, you know, mostly like, you know, transcribing videos. Hey, I'll give you five bucks if you transcribe this 10-minute, you know, YouTube video, that kind of thing, right? Um, so this guy writes... Write a positive five out of five review for a product on the website, and you know he has all these different terms. Um, you know, mark it, mark negative reviews is not helpful, right? So he, he's definitely trying to game the system. Look up here. The guy's name is Mike Bayard. If you do a quick Google search on that, Mike Bayard was the business development rep at Belkin, and what he was doing was for these products, this. Um, this uh, USB hub, right, had 20 one-star reviews. That kind of sucks for anyone that wants to try and buy it, right? So he was going through and trying to get people to write positive reviews and downvote all the negative ones. What happened? It got up to the president of the company. They had to, uh, they got kind of slapped a little bit by Amazon and um, and a, uh, you know a handful of other other websites as well. So definitely, you know, don't do shady stuff. Make sure that you're uh, being upfront when, when you when you do that. Um, take it offline. This is for anything that is controversial, or uh, if you have any kind of um, ragers on your page. This is from Netly. Um, a few. This was actually a couple years ago. Still, uh, they were using palm oil that was. Uh, in their Kit Kats and things, um, and it was affecting orangutans, right? So this is on Nestle's Facebook page. Uh, basically, hey, you know, they were trying to control the situation, but they were trying, they, they were going through and deleting people's posts. And they were also saying, they, they were just being kind of mean, you know. Um, if you look at this post, you know, hey, that's a new understanding of intellectual property rights. We'll muse on that. Or thanks for the lesson in manners. Consider yourself embraced. And, and you know they, they were just being uh, you know downright 
rude with these people. Uh, and that got reported on, right? So um, in a way, it's they call it the Streisand effect, um, if you guys have ever heard of that. It's basically uh, Barbara Streisand had a house that she didn't want people taking pictures of for some reason, um. and she raised heck about it. She was telling, you know, she was filing lawsuits and telling people to take down, the, you know, these pictures, and that actually drew more attention to the issue than the actual pictures in the first place did. So, in the same way, you know, if you if you go on uh, your own little personal crusade against the people on your Facebook page, um, that may attract a bunch of negative attention. So what you need to do now, number one, get on LinkedIn. Hopefully everyone's on LinkedIn. Is anyone not on LinkedIn? Okay, good. Uh, build up your network. You know, use all those connections you can and uh, stay in touch with them. You know, um, opportunities come to you. I, I've had, I've had probably four or five different recruiters contact me within the last couple years um, of people. You know, I haven't like I haven't actually applied for a job really in like two or three years. You know, people actually come to me and say, hey. You know, I, I've noticed some of the things you've been talking about on LinkedIn. Let me know uh, if you might if you might be interested. So that's you know, if you keep your your LinkedIn profile up to date, uh, that might be an option. Um, check out your industry group connections. See who's out there. Um, keep your resume up to date. Read read industry news and get news on Google. LinkedIn is really good with Google. Um, your LinkedIn page is probably one of the first ones that shows up when people search for your name. Um, my number one tip, by the way, for LinkedIn, your headline does not have to be your job title. Instead of saying, I'm a social media manager at BMC Software, I can say, I'm the, you know, a number, or I'm a top ranked social media consultant, um, trainer, speaker, you know, author, whatever, right, blogger, and that will help you show up in LinkedIn search more than I'm a social media manager at BMC Software. So take a look at that. Get on Twitter, stay on top of your news and trends, follow people in your field, develop your voice and, and um, following, connect with brands, connect with celebrities, you know, wh whoever you want. Um, Tim is awesome apparently at this because we've been going back and forth a couple times the last couple weeks and obviously with uh, Jessica too. So Clean up your Facebook. This goes back to kind of Joe's point of, you know, not cleaning out your, you know, to pass a test, but 76% of recruiters or hiring managers have checked out an applicant's profile on Facebook. 46% did before they reached out. So they were checking your profile out before they even said, hey, do you want to come in for an interview? 69% of recruiters have rejected an applicant because of something on their Facebook page. Clean up, you know, I, I mean, you guys know this stuff. Clean up your grammar and vulgar language. Update your professional history. A lot of people don't have the right professional history in or they don't have it updated, so check that out. Pick an appropriate picture. Check out your likes. You can click on this cog over here and click View As, and you can see what your um, Facebook profile looks like from the outside, uh, whether it's one of your friends or someone that doesn't you know, know you at all, so check that out. Here are just some of the pages that my friends like. Slacking off, legalize marijuana, and Jenna Jameson. Do not Google who Jenna Jameson is if you do not know. But <laughs> these are, you know, even if you don't have any bad pictures on your Facebook page, they can still see, in a lot of cases, um, the pages that you like. And depending on, you know, how professional those pages are, you you know that can affect how you're perceived as well. Blog, uh, establish a voice, make connections, and it's great for search engines. Um, and you, you can you can actually work with a lot of different folks on um, on you know if you if you contact um, a lot of bloggers, they'll actually let you guest blog on their blogs as well. So um, check that out. S show the world you mean business. And by that, I mean register your domain. I think this is one of the biggest things when it comes to um, 
when it comes to applying for jobs, if you have, you know, I'm, I'm Eric at ericttutung.com, and that, I think, speaks a lot to, you know, uh, especially if coming from a social media background, um, digital marketing and all that, versus just Joe Schmo at you know, uh, gmail.com or something. So register that in a domain and put a blog up. Get creative. This guy's name is Adam Pampsidi. He's from the UK. Um, he said, I spent my last 500 pounds on this billboard. Please give me a job. You know, like a thousand bucks or something. And of course, he's got his, his uh, website down here, employadam.com. Because of the social media uh, virality of this, it actually got reposted and shared so many times. He got a hundred different job offers based I mean, just on this one billboard. And uh, once he once he had that, he posted, "Spent my first wage packet on this billboard. Thanks for helping me." So you know, definitely be um, you know giving, I guess, in a way uh, with that, right? Uh, this is um, someone I think is pretty awesome. Um, I applied for the social media director position at the University of Michigan uh, back in December of 2011. Uh, a few months had passed, and I didn't hear, uh, you know, if that position had been filled or anything. So um, once I Googled for it, this was one of the first pages that popped up. And let me play it for you here. So here's it's dearlisarogers.com. Lisa Rogers is the Vice President of Global Communications for the university and the hiring manager of the social media director at the university. So this is speaking directly to them, or to her. Let me know if you can hear this. I don't know if it's going to you know, go through the system here. But it's basically, it's basically just music. Let me see here. I think I have a little slow connection here. Mm. Oh, wait, wait, sorry. One sec, I'm screen sharing the okay. um, PowerPoint deal, not the, the whole scene. So here we go. Here we go, sorry. Well, looks like my my connection really sucks. Basically, she goes through and says, you know, she's she's from Michigan. She went to the university. Uh, at the time, she's working at the Ann Arbor Symphony Orchestra, and she goes through a lot of the different things that she works on. Right, so she's in charge of this, the, the online marketing there, the social media. She goes she goes through screenshots of all the different uh, uh, campaigns that she run there, and uh, you know, it, it was just a really interesting. Um, cover letter, really. You know, it's an inter interactive cover letter, um, <clears throat> if you want to think about it that way. So it was, uh, I thought it was awesome. I wrote a blog post about it uh, here. And, you know, like I was saying before, blogging is awesome for your website. So right now, if you type in best social media job in, t in Google, I am the fourth... Uh, that blog post is the fourth um, link that shows up. If you search for social media cover letter, I'm the fourth one that shows up there too. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I mean, I, I don't care if people searching for social media cover letters get to me, but, um, you know, it's kind of just neat to 
to see um, the reaction that that story's gotten. Uh, so basically, what you sh you should do consider a career in social. This is mostly for the UNC folks. Sorry, um, there's being you know the B two B companies too. Consider those. Sign up for Twitter, LinkedIn, and your domain. Blog, provide value, and be yourself. So thanks, everyone. Uh, I'm at erictetung.com or eric at erictetung.com. Um, if you text Eric T. Tung to 50500, you can get my SMX business card. Um, there is a Pinterest board with more resources, cited studies, and additional info at ericttung.co slash SNHU resources. And I think that's it. So let me know if you have any questions. I have a I have a uh, a question. We're um, I'm working with um, a, a wholesale bakery. I know it's bizarre, but and uh, our website isn't up yet. But we uh, we're just running on Facebook, and uh, I was just wondering how that is possibly affecting us until the website's up. I mean, it seems like it's doing okay on its own. We're getting lots of responses, but I just didn't know it from a growth standpoint. Our intent is to do uh, Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, I mean, it, it kind of... I, I really kind of like um, the blog as kind of the center of your your online universe, right? So you have... When you have that blog as part of your website, um, it really, you know, brings in those keywords. It helps out your SEO. You know, when people are searching for, um, for, you know, on bakeries or something, um, you have a lot better likelihood of showing up higher in Google uh, mm -hmm. if you have, I think, you know, a, a more well-rounded website than, uh, than you know, concentrating the Facebook page. But uh, that being said, there's a lot that you can do. To, um, hold on. Everything just froze. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I don't think my camera's yeah. working. Anyway, uh, yeah. There's a, there's you know there's a lot you can do within Facebook too. You know you've got different apps and um, uh, iframes. You can actually frame a web page within your Facebook page. Uh, so if you have like a contact us form or something um, built on your website, you can actually pull that into your Facebook page. So it's mm -hmm. kind of um, it's kind of both. You know, concentrating on the Facebook page is good, but you know, definitely invest some resources in the website to make it um, mm -hmm. useful. I'd say. Yeah, we had talked about her um, one one of the owners doing a blog. Mm -hmm. On baking whoopie pies and donuts, and uh, and we just haven't gotten there yet. So I'll, maybe we'll put that back to the forefront a little bit, and mm -hmm. have her um, get something started. Yeah, but you know, think about it even from like a wider perspective, not just hey, we we bake this stuff and it's good, but you know, maybe you know, maybe hire uh, you know. I don't, I don't know who, who does it, right? Food artists or something? I don't know. But, you know, put together, like, really awesome-looking photos of, like, what you could do with a birthday cake or with this, or, you know, like, or uh, and a really scrumptious-looking plate of, of the product at a, you know, a cookout for the 4th of July or, you know, off the corner of your island counter for Thanksgiving or something. You know, just something kind of interesting. Because people always need to snack on stuff like that, right? When they're yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, when they're when they're getting ready for the holidays. So, you know, some some great imagery would be good. Um, on the Pinterest page, you know, maybe even uh, whoop on the Pinterest page and on the blog post, you know, what kind of maybe recipes can you make with their products, right? Can you make can you crumble it up and put it into a cake that's amazing or, uh, you know, something else like that, so. Yeah, we've been pretty, um, I've done a lot of the uh, graphics. Like this week we celebrated Shark Week. Uh, mm -hmm. We did uh, 
a remake of the a Jaws scene with a whoopie pie, you know, going in the water, going towards the <laughs> sailboat. Okay. It's bizarre, but you know. So we're just doing some weird things. But I, I, I like that idea of the the blog um, being a little bit more creative with that. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of the times, I mean, it, you have. To, I, I think you have to think uh, a lot bigger picture too, right? So. Um, like, for example, there was an insurance company in Australia that figured out when uh, President Obama was going down. It just froze. Oh. <laughs> well, we'll wait for him. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was just me. Yeah, we should be back. Hey, Dr. J, were you going to ask hey. some of our questions, or I just... am trying to. I put I put one over on the sidebar, and I'm going to try sure. to throw in throw in the rest. Um, it's just quicker to copy and paste them, like I did for that one, and then he can just read. Sure. But I didn't get a chance to tell him that. But um, I'm sure we'll sit and wait for a while. But um, as far as uh, organization, I think right now you and the rest of the classes are hitting a lot on that using uh, Hootsuite. Which I'm sure he probably uses something like that or Tweet Deck, um, and then of course when we were looking at the slides earlier um, of his everyday, the earring and his his list of things, which I think you guys do the same thing, and I've mentioned it in my other videos before of um, the the two apps, blog post and video. If you haven't seen it, you can go back to my YouTube um, channel. But just everything I do every day. I've got my, my Twitter open and Facebook and as I'm looking at things I make sure I'm constantly looking and reading and obviously sharing and not all at the same time and using something like Hootsuite or TweetDeck def definitely makes that easier and also with like the examples he's showing you of um, listening for your brand and I think those of you that have taken 555, 655 and 666 should have seen every one of those examples. Comcast Cares, the, uh, the online resume. Hey. I think we covered most of those too. There he is. I, I have some questions. I have some questions in the sidebar sure. for you whenever you do sure. get a chance. Got Go one on time management. Um, got one question about how are you staying more organized. I think specifically everybody would like to hear what you use and how you stay. Organized. I think the biggest challenge most of my students face with all the classes that we, you know, 555 and 655 and 666 is it's just a, a lot. It's a lot to handle. It's a lot to monitor yourself. A lot to answer tweets. I try to thank every new follower, and once you get over, you know, 200 followers, it's ridiculous. And then once you get over a thousand and you haven't made your lists, it's like you want to smack yourself in the face. Why didn't I start making those lists earlier? You know, any other tips in the that you have for them to help stay organized so it's not as overwhelming? Um, I would say, you know, w one of the things my boss says is, like, tweet when you eat. So kind of whenever you go on your coffee break or your lunch break, just kind of uh, check, out, check out Twitter, see what's new, right? I mean, if you try and save it for one time a day or one time a week or something, that, you know, you you're going to have a lot of information to catch up on. Um, check this out, though. Let me screen share this again. There's a couple different cool little um, services you can use. The first one I use is called IFT, I-F-T-T-T.com. It stands for If This, That. And basically what it does is it takes the APIs from different um, social networks and kind of combines them. So by this, I mean... You can take, so here's just some examples. Um, you know, take, like, you, you know, you, you know, that you can go in and share all your uh, LinkedIn posts to Facebook, or you can share all your Facebook posts to Twitter, all that kind of stuff, right? So this is kind of the next, next step up. Save all your Gmail attachments to Dropbox. That's kind of cool. Email me 10 things to know this morning. So that's a, an RSS feed, it looks like. Uh, whenever I add a new contact, mark it my calendar. So these are all different kinds of different uh, deals that you can put together. The ones I have are, let's see, so send me a text message to remind me 
um, of my anniversary. That's that comes in handy. Save all of my Instagram photos on Dropbox. Uh, if it's going to rain tomorrow, let me know. I ride a Harley, so it's kind of make me, um, you know, important to know. But you know, if my Facebook profile changes, update Twitter profile picture. Eh, that comes in handy every now and then if you want, right? So you can you can make it so anytime you post something on Instagram, it automatically posts on Facebook or it automatically gets tweeted. Or every time you um, every time you write a new blog post on your blog or someone else's blog. Maybe you re you're really like um, every time Radiant Six posts a new blog post, post that on my freelance um, Facebook page, right? So you can help kind of automate a few different things there, right? Another, th another thing I like is Buffer. Uh, because I think it's the easiest way to schedule tweets. So I've got 144 posts in my Buffer right now. And all you have to do is come up here and, uh, you know, select your different accounts. It's It's got Facebook profiles and pages, um, Twitter handles, and then LinkedIn, I think, companies, groups, or profiles. I think it does all three. So it doesn't have as many options as Hootsuite does, but it's really awesome because all you have to do is type in your tweet, and um, you already have a schedule picked. So these are all the times that I like to have Buffer tweet for me Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. So that way you don't have to go in like Hootsuite and a lot of the other other tools. You have to tell it, you know, I want this tweet to go out at on this day at this time. And so that really slows you down. This way you can actually put in a bunch of different tweets all at the same time uh, pretty easily, right? In addition to that, though, um, Buffer's got a Chrome extension that integrates in pretty awesomely. Um, if you mouse over any tweet at all, actually, let me go to my home screen here. If you mouse over any tweet, you can Buffer retweet that. So basically that means you can have it automatically pull into Buffer for you, and it usually does it natively. Like if you look over here, some of these, some of these um, posts have other people's names on them. Uh, usually it does a native retweet. So here you go. I can say I want to retweet this natively um, through Buffer, and it'll just add it to the end of my Buffer list. But you could also say, okay, uh, I don't know, let's go to bmc.com. One of the other things is when you download the buffer extension, it also gives you this little um, this little icon over here in the corner. Oops, that's probably not a good thing. So here's here's my company website. Um, you can click on this buffer icon and it'll automatically pull, I think, the title of the page as well as the URL and automatically create a buffer um, post for you. So BMC Software Cloud Computing IT. So that's that's the um, so you, um, that's the the web page title, and then here's the buffer um, URL. And you can just buffer this straight in. So if you're reading blog posts throughout the day or something like that, you can just buffer these straight into um, your account, and it'll just post for you whenever, right? Um, I use another service called Twitter Feed, I think. Twitter Feed. So um, if you notice, I've probably tweeted maybe a dozen times since we started talking. If you notice, I've probably... And it, um, that's because of Twitter Feed. I actually um, will tweet pretty much anything that goes through several different blogs, so any of these retweets are from Buffer, um, but a lot of these right here, right? Um, this is from Amber Cadabra. Um, okay, this is from the you know um, what's that even called? I forgot the uh, little magazine deal. So I've got I've got like so many different overlapping tools. Kind of funny sometimes because everything gets. Bit lead as well for me, so I can tell um, all the different clicks. And so, so yeah, I mean, it, it, it all kind of depends, but there's there's definitely a lot of different automation options out there for you. 
I've um, also got another question on the sidebar, and I think those sure. that are in the uh, classes with me now, I showed them a little video of me just setting aside 10 minutes with Buffer App and Hootsuite looking through LinkedIn and, and reading some articles. And I wish somebody would have shown me those years ago when I started, and it probably mm -hmm. wouldn't be a bad idea to include that in the first social media uh, class because Buffer App, it, it, it it doesn't offer me everything, but it is so much easier with that extension right there on the screen, mm -hmm. rather than having to open up a whole other window to copy and paste my articles in. Um, anyway, the second question we have is um, in relation to a social media tool that you are not interested, you don't see the value in it, or on the contrary, if there's one that you really think is underappreciated. Kind of went along with what we just went before. Mm -hmm. I guess those would be social media tools for management, but... <clears throat> Um, let me see. I think one of the cool ones I like is uh, 20 Feet. And they actually have a free version that's pretty decent. Um, it, you have you can sign in with your your Facebook and Twitter. Um, you can type in your Bitly your YouTube and Google Analytics as well. Um, I, I always have trouble logging in for some reason. I don't know if my, my account's not working or something. But, um, yeah, see. But they will actually tell you, uh, they'll, they'll actually track your information forever. So I know Twitter's just starting to get some, uh, some analytics in, but, you know, you can actually go back and see a lot of your history through 20 feet from the day that you start, though. It won't go backwards. But it'll also tell you, you know, you gained, you know, 15 followers this week. You usually only gain 10, so that's kind of cool. You know, you can see how you're trending versus, his, you know, historical stuff. Uh, another one I like is called Community, C-O-M-M-U-N -M -M dot I-T. And what this does is it's kind of a social, it's, I, I'd say, I, I don't even know what they, like, um, who I would say they compete with, but let me see. So you can log in. Um, and what it does is it, it pulls in all of your um, followers and who you're following. And it'll tell you who your top influencers are. So these are people that, you know, are in my community that I... Um, have tweeted at or they've t tweeted at me or something. Um, but you can, you know, it'll tell you these are the high value members in your, you know, in your followership, uh, basically. Um, you know, here are your influencers and supporters. Um, but it'll also say, hey, you know, here's some tweets that you probably haven't replied to yet. Maybe you should reply to these. Or here are people that you haven't engaged with in a while you should re-engage with them because you used to tweet them a lot. So it's kind of neat, you know, just to see some of the things that they put together. Um, it'll it'll pull your lists in, too. So, you know, Social Big Guns is my list of the top 50 social media influencers. Um, Dave Dave Kirpin, Jay Bear, Chris Brogan, these types. Um, it'll actually tell you, it'll, uh, it'll sort their tweets by the number of times they've been retweeted. So if you're looking for good content, this is probably the stuff that's kind of important. Or you can also come in here and retweet this into Buffer. So you could say, hey, people have already shared this information. People like this inf info. You know, I can stick into Buffer and uh, you know, retweet it myself. So those are a few different tools. Um, if you're looking from a business perspective, I like Sprout Social. Um, they actually have a lot of good info, especially if you um, use their their interface. Um, they've got, I think, some of the prettiest reporting. So let me log in here. Oh, if you, if you see this little tool up here I keep logging in to stuff with, it's called uh, LastPass. It's just a way to keep all your passwords straight, especially if you have, you know, 10, 15, 50, or, you know, 50 different logins, especially with your social accounts. Is a, that's kind of a cool tool. Uh, thank you. I don't care. Um, so um, not only can you check out your company info, 
but can actually come in here and they give you a little personal mode too. So you can see your own stats um, tied in. So in the last 15 days, I've had 131.8 million impressions, um, 100, you know, 1,700 interactions, 604 unique users, <clears throat> and it tells you kind of you know when you've been mentioned and uh, retweeted. It gives you gives you some follower demographics, um, and you know, let me see. I probably can't show you any of the actual company data, um, but you know, from my from my personal perspective, you know, they they they've got um, you can you can publish so you can um, schedule out tweets, um, and they've actually got a way that they can track how long it takes you to respond to tweets uh, as well. So it'll tell you you know what your response rate has been and uh, what that speed looks like. Um, okay, one more. Peak Analytics. Peak Analytics actually has a free version that's pretty powerful. Um, what they do is, I think they're one of the most robust kind of demographic tools out there. So you can go in, log in with your uh, Twitter handle, and you can see a lot of detailed demographics that you can't even get from Twitter, really. Uh, and what they do is they go through and they'll find each of your followers and they'll figure out um, where else where else they appear in social and how influential they are, right? So they can figure out how they go to YouTube. Okay, here we go. Here's my here's my um, last report. I've got fifty six thousand followers. Um, your social pool is an is a um, a measurement of how many times the average Twitter follower uh, you have influence of, right? So you want that number to be as big as you can have it. If you have a 2x, it means you're twice as influential, and so on. Um, most of the people that follow me are people, tw about a fifth of them are businesses, and 2% are private, you know. Um, my, the average network size of my followers is 9,800. So my average follower has 9,800 followers. And that, that's kind of a measurement of how influential your followers are, right? Um, more male than female. Age range, female followers by age, male followers by age. Cities. Houston, I have three and a half times as many Houston followers as the average person. Uh, but that only makes four percent of my followers, right? And so that this helps you kind of figure out where your where your people are from, where your followers are from. Texas, Florida, top countries, interest affinity. My my followers really like business, so that's good, right? I guess I'm in B two B social media, but you know this can help you figure out, you know, do I want to be giving out movie tickets somewhere, you know, are, are they, do, do my people like music better, or do they like sports? And so maybe, you know, this can help you figure out, well, apparently my followers don't like video games as much as the average, right? So you can figure out a lot about your, your followers. Income level, industry, education, social media use, uh, social memberships, are they on Facebook, are they on LinkedIn, uh, online activities, so... It's it's this is really uh, useful for the most part. On a free account, you can analyze five hundred thousand uh, followers, basically, right? So, it you know if you have ten thousand followers on your account and your company has twenty thousand followers, you can you can you can um, you can analyze up to uh, you know as many accounts as you have that make up to five hundred thousand. So. All right, what else you got? On the sidebar, we have a third question. How do you feel your personal social media marketing strategy has set you apart from others in the field? Um, I think, um, let me see if I can find it. There's a page I turn to. This is uh, Brian Solis' last book, What's the Future, WTF. I think I think he wanted to call it WTF before he came up with the title, right? 
But, <laughs> Jealous. That's going to be the title of my first book, but it's taken now. <laughs> I think my, mine is going to uh, actually be Just Google It. Yeah, right? I, I almost <laughs> put that on a business card at one point, but I was like, eh, that probably won't come off very well. Um, oh, where is it? He had a quote in here that was basically, you know, today we have brands that are people and people that are brands, right? So if you think about um, in the past, if you need a customer service or something, um, you know, your your chips were stale. You would call into Frito-Lay or, you know, you would get their marketing through your your magazine, that kind of thing. So it was, it was very, here is your, here's your marketing, here's your advertising, and then here's your family, right? Here's your, here's the pictures that you want to see. You never got on the phone with your mom and had Frito-Lay chime in. Hey, by the way, we have a special on Cheetos today. Make sure you go to your grocery store. But that's exactly how social works, right? If you're on Facebook, if you're on Twitter, you're going to see stuff from your friends, your aunt, your uncle, your your neighbor or whatever, and then you're going to see all the stuff, you know, all the marketing stuff from everyone else too. So it's all, you know, never before have people been, uh, or have have brands been people, and at the same time, people are kind of brands too, and that's how you should really kind of think about yourself. You know, if you think about uh, Chesley Sullenberger, the the guy that, you know, the guy, the U.S. Um, air pilot that landed in the Hudson, or um, what, like uh, Richard Branson or something. They all have huge brands around their names, but even people like Brian Solis are starting to get their own following. Uh, you know, you might follow Jay Bear. Check out check out Jay Bear's business card. This is really cool. It's a bottle opener. But, you know, people, people like that, you know, they're starting to become their own brands too. So in a lot of, um, I would say, you know, consider everything that you're publishing as something that, you know, should reflect on your brand, should be, you know, thought-provoking, I think, should help people and add to their, um, add to their lives, really, right? Um, I would say the last three jobs I got have all been because I had, you know, a pretty decent social media following. Um, you know, I'm up to just short of 60,000 followers. I'm about the 19th most followed person in Houston, so that really helps, you know, kind of make the case for people when I'm trying to apply for a job, really, you know. Let's see. Oh, Hopefully you'll allow me to have one more question on the sidebar. Sure. Yep. I know I don't want to keep you too late. No problem. Joe, did you have a question? Well, to kind of to chime in with that, like, I think a lot of social media people get really caught up in their quote-unquote personal brand, but people like Ashley Brown, does anybody know who Ashley Brown is in here? Mm-mm. He no. runs he runs Coca Cola's social media program, which you know is one of the largest in the world, with seventy million some odd followers on Twitter. Or no, no. You're, you're not talking about. Well, you're not talking about Adam, are you? No, Ashley. Okay. Okay. Um, and you know he only has twenty eight hundred people on his on his Twitter, so it's kind of it's kind of a weird thing where like you know is he a brand influencer? Yeah, definitely because he has so much weight behind him. But he doesn't, you know. He he's not concerned with his personal brand. He's more concerned with what he's done, I guess you would say, right? Oh, I mean, um, believe it or not, there was actually a guy, a guy at Coca Cola a couple, a few years ago, named Adam Brown. Um, went to uh, went to Dell to run social there, and then I don't. He's he's at Salesforce now. I don't even know how many followers he has, but. Um, yeah, you see a lot of the people that, you know, are kind of, you know, they're, they're community managers in their, you know, and that's what they do, and they don't really want to become kind of thought leaders in the space too, right? I mean, um, I actually tweeted out a couple weeks ago, hey, Liberty Mutual, does my homeowners and auto insurance cover for Sharknado? <laughs> and someone there actually tweeted me back and said, you know, we're researching that right now, but we we're pretty sure, it, you know, it covers for, you know, yield quakes or something. But mm -hmm. I figured out who one of the people at Liberty Mutual was, and they only have, you know, a couple hundred followers, right? So not everyone, you know, wants to or needs to make a brand, you know, for themselves. Um, 
Christy, was that some whiskey there? Yeah, I wish. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, not everyone needs to make a brand, but you know, if, if you want to do that, if you want to blog regularly, if you want to, you know, um, I would, I think, you know, try and put some interesting ideas forward. Uh, I actually wrote a blog post a couple, uh, about a month ago now, for Salesforce uh, Marketing Cloud that I was trying to analyze the big, big uh, trends for social way into the future. So things like, if you like face, if if you like, you know, the uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers on Facebook, but you check in to a venue on Foursquare while there's a Taylor Swift concert going on, does Foursquare tell that information to Facebook? And what does that mean for marketers, right? Or if you have a Fitbit or if you have a Nike Plus running app going on, they know, you know what your heart rate is or what your blood pressure is, right? And how you sleep and where you jog. You know, how does this all play into the, the bigger picture of social media in marketing in the future. So, um, I don't remember where I was going with that. But, uh, you know, so I, I'm trying to kind of, uh, you know, write bigger ideas. Um, so, you know, having a bigger following helps me from that regard uh, because I'm not just, you know, some some crazy guy with weird ideas. I have actually have, you know, at least some people listening. So... Does that make sense, I guess? So you don't need to have, you know, you don't need to make a brand out of yourself, but um, at the same time, when you do, um, you know, you, you get to become, I don't know, you, you get to go to, like, speak at different conferences, and I like, uh, I mean, Scott Monty, for example, is the lead social media guy at Ford, and he's a big influencer. You'll see him speaking at Salesforce uh, conferences and stuff like that all the time. Jeremiah Ouyang, same thing. Um, uh, Jason Fall, I think, is over at Cafe Press. So there, you know, there are some pretty. Um, Jason Falls wrote. Let's see if I have it. I don't know if I do. Um, no, no bullshit social media. I like. <laughs> Oops. I like mentioning it just because I can say bullshit on a webinar. <laughs> but you know, um, there, there. So there are definitely people that make a name for themselves and then uh, use that to go, you know, to, to bigger, bigger, different companies. So, all right, I've got a chat question here. Uh, Eric recently had a blog post encouraging people to tag their Vine videos with a special hashtag from what I believe to be a conference. Um, how, how do the, basically, how do these brands leverage Vine as a mode of advertising? Okay, so let me show you. Um, at BMC, we were actually one of the first customers for a company called Vine Peak. Affiliated with Vine, they're actually independent. Um, oops. And what they do is they act. Oh, I guess they changed. I guess they rebranded vpeaker.com. Okay. Anyway, um, I think I need to sign out here and sign back in. One moment, please. Uh, Hold on one sec. Let me find my password. Here we go. Let's try this one. Okay. So, let me see. Let's log in. Okay. 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 No. Hmm. 
Um, hold on one second. Let me see. I don't know how you log into this now. Uh... Hmm. Well, anyway, uh, basically what Vine Peak did, our V Peaker, is um, they they made it so you could actually string together Vine videos with a particular hashtag. So if you are at, uh, we actually used it. We actually used it at. Um, a conference called uh, Pink 13, which is um, uh, it's a help desk software conference. And what we did was we we sponsored a Vine Peak channel that tied together all the videos from um, anyone that tw that tweeted a Vine that used that hashtag. So it strings them all together. It makes it kind of cool. Um, I heard a lot more about Instagram video kind of kicking Vine in the butt, but uh, I actually haven't used Instagram video yet. Um, there's a lot of cool, I mean, like, um, a lot of cool different, you know, little um, ways that different companies are using Vine. Um, here is one from GE where they kind of took a little chemistry angle on it. Let's see if I can find it here. And really, you know, it, it makes it really interesting to see because you've got um, you've got such a short amount of time, right? So it makes it really interesting to see what people can come up with. Can y'all see that? When life gives you C6 H807, make H2O plus Life gives you lemons, make lemonade, right? Um, Calvin Klein. Did a... Um, did a vine. This is theirs. Basically, they said, oh, I don't think that's, it's not live. Basically, they had a bunch of muscly guys in CK underwear saying, uh, and they were like, since the lights are out anyway, or something like that. So they actually put together a Vine um, during the Super Bowl blackout um, as well. So, um, so yeah, I mean, definitely, you know, uh, if you look at some of the numbers, YouTube video, uh, I guess people on YouTube are watching longer and longer videos, but if you get more into the data, it looks like um, it looks like people are doing so because they're watching TV shows. But for business-related or company-related videos, people are ditching out, you know, a lot earlier than they've ever had, right? So they have shorter and short, shorter um, attention spans. So I think stuff like Vine. Uh, really kind of pushes the envelope when it comes to being creative and gives gives people something interesting to see. I'm, I'm still available. I mean, I don't know if anyone has any more questions or, you know, uh, feel free to contact me on, on Twitter. Uh, Eric? Yep, Tim. Uh, this is Tim. Yeah, I, I have a question. Um, it's it kind of ties into uh, job search, but for me, I'm more of a entrepreneur business owner. Mm -hmm. um, I find a lot of organizations, and I'll pick one as a healthcare provider, and their digital um, presence is a mess. Like they'll run banner ads, and the banner ads might be for uh, joint uh, replacement, and it goes to their homepage, okay? And yeah. you can see they've set up a Twitter account, but they're not tweeting, they're not doing anything. They could be listening for, as far as I know, but 
do you have any suggestions as to, you know, you identify these firms and you, you see, number one, they're doing things incorrectly, okay? Um, would it be a good approach be you find a similar competitor who is excelling and say, look it, this is what you could be doing and this is what you're doing wrong mm -hmm. and approach them in that manner? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, once you, once you get an in within a particular industry, you know, it's a lot easier to prospect within that, right? So you can say, hey, here's some of the work I've done for other companies uh, and kind of go from there. But, um, I mean, you know, check out check out LinkedIn, see if you can figure out who's in charge of marketing there or something like that, you know, uh, especially when it comes to stuff like PPC ads, uh, you know, pull up some research and, uh, you know, know your numbers for sure. Um, pretty much all the research says, you know, you want them to have as few, op you know, options as possible when you're going off a PPC ad. You want them to have all the information they need on one page, fill out a form, get some more information, uh, that kind of thing. Um, you know, if you if you give them, obviously the home page sucks, but even if you give them a landing page that has a bunch of links on it, they're going to start clicking other places and not fill out your form, uh, and it'll, you know, you're not going to get that lead. So, uh, definitely, you know, that, that's, that, that sounds good to me, you know, just figure out um, what numbers apply to, you know, see, see what you might be able to figure out about them, right? There's a bunch of different tools out there. Um, let's see. What is the one? SpyFu? Spy uh, kind of a little bit about their uh, PPC buying. Um, and so you can see what they think, what SpyFu thinks, um, they're probably paying for different keywords, right? So you can sit, you can get a little bit more um, details about what you think they might be spending money on. And then, um, you know, you might be able to put together a little bit of a proposal from them based on that. I'm just one other. I'm curious. Have you ever um, come across an opportunity and you discover maybe the business? And I, I've seen this before, where I, I don't want to deal with them because they're such a mess. I mean, do you have any red flags you look for where you don't want to deal with a, a business or client or anything like that uh, that that you've come across over the years? I mean, as long as they're a legit business, right? I mean, there's a bunch of like. MLM pyramid type companies out there, kind of shady, shady type companies. Um, I actually, um, I was looking at an infographic earlier today at a website of a marketing company that actually happened to be not too far away from me. They're like two or three miles away from me here in Houston, and we we started chatting. There, this little chat window pops up, and it's like, hey, let us know if you have any questions. So we start talking. Hey, what do you do? That kind of thing. And these guys sell YouTube views and like Twitter likes or, or Twitter followers uh, and Facebook likes, and they even have a little uh, a shopping cart on their website. I want I want ten thousand you know uh, followers a month. I want five thousand YouTube views, and it's like you know definitely you know don't work with that type of shady type of you know thing, right? But other than that, you know if 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 it's so thin, you're if it's within your um, skill set, why not do it? You know, say, say hey, this is going to take. I, you know, I estimate this would take 24 months to do, but you know, we're going to take care of your SEO. We're going to start up a blog or something. Uh, make sure there aren't any 404 errors on your pages, uh, and then you know, branch out into social and other other areas. You know, uh, but you know, but. You know, if you do have a little bit of hesitation, it might be because, you know, I mean, you can always feel out what their, what their, um, what their culture is like, right? It might just be a company that is kind of old. I mean, if it says copyright 2010 on their on their website, you might, you know, it it, it could go either way. They might not really value their website or something, or they might be looking for someone to come in and help them, you know, change it. So either way. Sure. One one uh, reason why I ask that is I know some people that work in the energy industry, and I, I like the supplier end of it, which I think you were 
I can't remember where you were for a while. Um, but you know, you talk to people within the organization, and it sounds like you know, I wouldn't want them as a client, and because you said like open up a can of worms, and you could tell by, for example, their Twitter feed is, you know, they'll just they just talk, they don't communicate, they just like four tweets a day, and people are on there saying, you know, when is my power going to come? You know, you know how it is. It's mm -hmm. they, they hate the company. You know, I don't know how you can change that culture. So I was just curious whether you know you had a feel for. Uh, you pretty much answered my question because you know if you look at like in my my Hootsuite, I have my local NYSEG and um, a bunch of other utilities or energy or suppliers, and some of these companies they don't they'll just they just fire off they don't respond to anybody, yeah. and it's just amazing. I was just curious how you know how can somebody get away with that? Yeah, it just really depends on you know their strategy. A lot of a lot of the energy companies really just use Twitter. And sometimes Facebook even as as you know a press release engine. Hey, we're uh, you know make sure you sign up for our green energy program or whatever. I mean, and, and they won't ever respond to anything. Uh, but I see that is is really starting to decrease. Um, even uh, CenterPoint here in Houston, uh, like May of last year, finally got on. And you know, Houston is the fourth largest metro in the U.S. Um, and our utility company still wasn't on Twitter. I thought that was like ridiculous, right? So, um, I think I think people are kind of warming up, and it just depends on, you know, it's it's really hard to find a good client sometimes, just because you know the ones that are really really interested in social probably are already doing it, right? And then sure. the people that aren't doing it probably have a reason. So the the sweet spot would be people that are kind of looking at it but don't really know how to proceed. Um, now I would say you know you you're doing a great job writing blog posts as it, as it is. Maybe do some blogging on your own if you do. Um, start trying to write about um, social and that kind of thing. People will find you. I mean, you know, I wrote a blog post uh, a little while ago. Um, you know, uh, I think it's like ten things to to spice up your. Um, social media strategy in 2013 or something, and um, Marketing Cloud, uh, Salesforce Marketing Cloud published that for me. Or you know how you know what are the first steps you should take when trying to get into social? Here are the different options you can do. Learn yourself, hire on an agency, you know th those types of things. And and people will search for that. They'll find you. And just at the bottom of your blog post, hey, you know I uh, I do. These different things for social. Um, make sure you contact me if you have any questions. So sure. And the two uh, articles, like just this week, you uh, you know the content you and, and you uh, retweet. Uh, two got me thinking. It was one about mm -hmm. the uh, age group of who's using social media. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have an older set moving on to it, and then you had something about um, I think it was healthcare. So in my head, I start going through thinking about saying, gee, joint replacement. We have a local health entity who uh, I think is like, I guess they claim to be the top joint replacement uh, program in the Northeast. But mm. the only way they, I, I see them as kind of trying to engage and tell people about it is via, you know, your typical TV ad or radio ad. And they're not, you know, either it's through organic, uh, you know, web search or PPC or social and they're not doing anything. So, you know, just mm -hmm. viewing your articles, which, you know, you spread this content out, you know, it gets my mind thinking and saying, gee, yeah. if they're, you know, the top in the Northeast, I mean, even if somebody in the class could say, look at, uh, why go to the traditional route of a job? Just say, look at, approach one of these companies, say, this is what you could do. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it just it ties into just what you do with all your content, it stimulates my mind thinking about what, what could be yeah. done. Well, it's, sometimes with, you know, especially with, with like, Healthcare and you know devices and medications and stuff. You know, uh, there's a lot of regulations around that. So sometimes you might you know think about doing your local taco shop or something before you look at you know something that might be a little bit more sure. more regulated, right? So um, and that might be one of the reasons they're not they're not as you know upfront about it too is they can't go out and say hey. You know, feel two thousand percent better with our new joint replacement surgery or whatever, right? So, um, you know, so maybe uh, you know, maybe consider other areas or something like that. I don't know. So. Sure. 
Okay, I'm going to say let's let Eric get back to his right. family. <laughs> we all appreciate right, well, it so a much. lot. Thanks. I know all thanks of very much for the uh, everybody out there appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Eric. Well. Thank you very much. Thanks, Will. Nice to meet you. Let's let Eric get all his uh, data up there. I'm sure that's what he's doing right now. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, text Eric Tung to 50500, and you can get my uh, SMS contact info. Or um, you pop that up again. You've got... Um, You want the URL to the presentation or to the additional resources. And then I'll probably be posting this um, in class in the next day or two. So you can watch it again and we can share it with your classmates that weren't able to make it. All right. Excellent. Thank you so much. I Thank appreciate you. it. No problem. Thank Let you. Let me know if you have any more questions. Bye.